Hello from BC and welcome back to In My Shed. It's been a few weeks but I have been busy. This is a presentation of tools for regrinding from one of my customers and at last somebody that looks after his tools. In a plastic toolbox, shrink wrap all over it, very very little swarf, clean cutters. A bit of a surprise, here's two from the same manufacturer, two different methods of grinding. One with equal facets and one with alternate teeth. Still don't know what they're on about. But the interesting job today is a countersink we'll look at shortly that's spun in the chuck and has done a little bit of damage. Also I'll move you along and show you something given to me by someone who likes me. Well here's something you don't often see. High speed steel large blocks in Australia. Uh, very expensive, although these are very very old capital brand some uh, 5 8 3 quarter and 7 8 inch squares by 150 long or 6 inches long super capital brand these are really going to come in handy on the shaper and also for form tools in the future thanks a lot for that Jim this is the countersink in question been sent out to me by a customer for sharpening but the main problem I have is the shaft is sustained a whole lot of damage from spinning in the chuck. You can see a few high pieces there that have been raised up by the chuck jaws and an attempt by the customer to relieve the mess and all they've done is make it worse. At first I thought I'd set it up between centres which was a really good idea except the shaft has run out from the centres of about six thou which I found very very surprising however the outside of the shaft is concentric with the body of the countersink. So all I can really do is mount the shaft up in a collar chuck, not take anything off the diameter, but try and take these high spots off. They'll be the nasties that'll give me a bit of grief. So I'll put some power on the workhead and we'll see what we can do. I've got it up just in the standard Clarkson workhead with an ER32 collar chuck. It's gripping the work by about 13 millimeter, which well, gets it to run reasonably concentric, but as I'm not trying to cylinder grind, just take the high spots off, I think it should be good enough. We'll come back when the power's on. So here we are, just starting to take the first little bit of the burrs off. And man, that's one hard bit of material. There are really short sparks coming off this. There's a little bit more. I don't know how they got it to burr up like that. With those sparks that are coming off. Now there's another bit. We'll just take a little bit at a time. If somebody would like to donate a small cylindrical grinder to make this job a heck of a lot easier. It's amazing how high those raised pieces were.
Slowly, slowly we'll get them down. That's about it now, I think. You can see there's a little bit of run out in the shaft. Probably a half a cow. So I think if I try to do any more, I'm just going to create more damage. I should be able to grip that with reasonable concentricity now and get the job done. We'll move it over to the form relief grinder and sharpen the cutter. Well again, here we are back on the Serbian tool grinder with the countersink whose shaft we've just cleaned up a little bit. I've got the form relief grinder set up. I use the setting gauge in the rear slot and align the upper and lower edge at the rear to be vertical. So I'll now power up the head and gradually engage the grinding wheel. I only ever feed it in about a thou at a time as these hard cutting tools take a lot of grinding to get the material down.
Yes, the process is quite laborious. Especially when there's a bit of material to take off. I'd say this countersink was probably ground to about 88 degrees or something odd originally, but our standards here in Australia are 90 degrees. It's a shame I don't know whose tool it is. The major part of the damage in the shank is where the maker's name is etched on. You can see now it's starting to move up the clearance land a little bit. Won't be long before we get a full witness. One thing you have to be very careful of with grinding big tools like this is they get extremely hot. So you have to let them rest a while before you try and take them out of the truck. So use a nice piece of rag to do so. Now it makes me wonder if the shaft was out of concentricity with the centres by about 6 thou, the head is grinding very, very concentric to the shaft. So where was the manufacturing error? This will be getting a bit boring, so I'll bring you back when it's just about ready. And here we are coming up to the last couple of passes. You can see the clearance area is cleaning up nicely behind the edge now. I think maybe one more pass and we'll have that edge completed.
Yep, just one more I hope. And that's a job well done to pass that back to the customer on Monday. Thanks for watching.